It is podcasting time. We are here at the PowerWorks Garage. Glenn Power joining me. If you are watching us on YouTube or on Spotify in video, hello, welcome. Those of you who are listening to us on your favorite podcasting platform, hello and welcome. And of course, those listening on 100.3 Talk Radio in Dubai, in your cars, welcome. <laughs> and as always, please, please, you know, get involved, share, and like, and comment, and be present with us. <laughs> on that note, <laughs> welcome, Glenn. We're back. We're back. We're yeah. back. Another Express edition. It is. It is. We're doing more and more of these as I cram our podcasting in between my day job as the Dean of the College of Communication and Media Sciences, which really means I am the email jockey. Day job, night job. It, it, yes. Yeah. I, I, I truly, at this moment, can empathize with the number of messages, emails, personal things you got to deal with at all hours of day and night. Mm. And everything is a crisis. It's all good fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing about it, though, because it's not easy. So you are guaranteed that someone that's doing the job does it because they enjoy it. Yeah. They, they yeah. want to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. No, it's, it's good. It's all good. And it's, 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 it's an opportunity to make change, right? And that's, yeah. that's why we do these things. Yeah. yeah interesting. I want to, I want to dive right into things, what, what we do on this podcast for those of you who are new, because actually looking at the statistics, and this is the beauty of being streamed electronically, as you can see and, visualize who's listening, where they're listening from, why, how long do they listen, and are they new? And we have a lot of new listeners, so welcome to all of you. Great to have you with us. And it's interesting to note that many of the topics that we've talked about in the past and many of the topics that you have highlighted in the past, especially with electric vehicles, are coming true today. And you are mm. being vindicated for what some might have said was some pessimism about electric vehicles. Yeah, it was. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, it never came. It never came from a sort of. It wasn't malicious. It, it wasn't. Yeah, it was never a luddite sort of perspective on it in terms of I'm scared of the new thing and what's it going to mean for my current way of doing business or yeah, what have you. Yeah. Um, but I mean, if you look at you look at anything, I mean, even even internal combustion cars, you know, they they had problems at the fit, and they still do, but they had problems when they were new. You know, you ch servicing them every time you stop the engine, yeah, practically, and and you know, setting what would now be classed as a major, well, it doesn't really exist, but what would now be classed as major mechanical repairs, you know, valve clearances on a service, and yeah. and and that sort of stuff, and and retalking <laughs> components down yeah. on a service, yeah. th things things improve and my, my 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 thing with evs has always been i don't think they're going to have the necessity to improve i think they've started it you know that standing on the shoulders of giants or whatever you want to say in terms of they know pretty much that they can let's take tesla as the example because everybody knows tesla they can take a uh, a pick and choose and pay salaries, high salaries to people from existing car companies. And, and they've done that and they've taken them in the, and they've built a decent product. But, you know, I don't really see them as the solution. And I think more and more people are, are seeing that now. And so they don't really need to improve. What's the, you know, what, what's the chances of, of, of them genuinely being a, 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 a big site on the road in terms of passenger cars, privately owned passenger cars in the next 30 years. And I, I don't, I don't really see that. I don't, I don't think it's not when you've got, you know, BMW, um, for example, now they, they've got a huge push for hydrogen. Yeah. And, and when you've got people like BMW, when you get the VW group, when you get general motors, Ford, all, all those people start to come around to it. I think that's when you're going to notice that, well, you know what? These batteries are not great. Well, look, from a sustainable energy perspective, we've got a problem because yeah. we need sustainable energy to fuel these electric vehicles. But I, I almost wonder, and, and I, I'd love to hear from our participants, our audience. I'm wondering if municipalities globally, communities globally, have, in a sense, given up on electric vehicles because I don't see, 
and it just 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 could be me but i don't see this big push continued push no. for charging stations and maintenance of these charging stations and them opening up in more and more places i am not seeing it that's right you look at the rate of initial adoption of the tech yeah like here we had two years of free charging oh man it was it was glory days <laughs> And everywhere you went, there was charging stations. Like in yeah. the mall, you get priority parking. You know? <laughs> oh, no. here's, here's, I'm going to pause you for a second. This is my favorite one. I'm going to take a picture of it when I see it at my local mall that I, I head to. There's a sign, EV charging stations for EVs. There's no charging station. <laughs> There's parking spots. It says EVs. Yeah. There is nowhere to charge. Yeah. And I thought that's an indictment right there of the vehicles. Yeah. I mean, look, it's, it, 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 that example is a good one because you've got to think about Think about the the, for the the sort of utilities requirement for something like a shopping mall. You know, we're in we're in Dubai, right? The world's biggest shopping mall, Dubai Mall. The car park's ridiculous. But I've been there. I've been there. Well, two no, two weeks ago on a on a Friday afternoon. Oh, good to luck. take my daughter to a birthday party in there. And. I parked on the eleventh floor, which is the roof. Yeah, this is the, sh- the <laughs> world's biggest shopping mall, and it's rammed, and it's Friday, and everyone buys stuff online these days. Yeah, right. So the car park's full. Inside the mall is full. It's like being in a mosh pit, walking round. There's no <laughs> enjoyment to the experience, and then you're expected to lay what another. Let, even if even if there was just fifty EV charging points, which probably wouldn't even account for like. Five percent, and it's not, is it? Of the parking spaces, it's not even probably one percent, to be honest. But even if you were to lay those on, imagine the the civil works required to do that. You've yeah. got to put the cable in, yeah, and yeah. you've then got to, you know. So we've had all these conversations before, and I think that it's just becoming more and more. Do you know what? It's not worth it because people see that the the hydrogen alternative is there, right? And 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 again, back to internal combustion, we. We've got a another Skoda on lease, and is that the Fabio that I saw sitting outside? Or is that no, no, that's Ian's. That's oh, it, that's Ian, the Skoda yeah. guy, the UAE's unofficial ambassador to Skoda. The Skoda. Only, the only person trying to sell them in the country, apart yeah. from me, I think, is Ian. <laughs> but the we we've got a, a, a Skoda, and we drove we we filled it up, and we drove from Dubai to Fajera, from Fajera to Hatta from Hatta back to Fajera, from Fajera back to Dubai. We used a quarter of a tank of fuel and it averaged about five litres. So why wouldn't you buy that car? Like that's, right? that's not bad. That, that, is, that is exceptional. Yeah, and that, exceptional. Was with a, that was with four of us in it. I mean, that is children, exceptional. You know? With the AC running. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's December. Or, yeah. So, but still. It's, no, it's not super hot, but the AC was on. Yeah. Wow. So, I think people have started to realise that, right, these EVs are super expensive, and I mean, you put a story in the notes, or I read it somewhere else, where fleet companies that bought them for rentals have, well, have, is, have had their yeah basically had their book values lost. They've they've just lost a massive amount of money. In, this in, is six yeah. big big car rental company uh, globally. Yeah, and they are no longer going to rent Teslas. Yeah, because the value of them dropped yeah. literally overnight. They've lost residual value, so mm. it doesn't. Their books don't balance anymore, and there's no justification to keep them on. And, and why would you then go and risk that happening again? So, I think a lot of people. I, I've got no issues with electric cars. I, I like driving them. There's something different. Yeah. They're novel. I think if I was driving only electric vehicles, like I did for a while, I'd soon lose that. They've got the novelty still with 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 the majority of people on the road, uh, of, of road users that drive cars. But I think there's so many other options now that are becoming, you know what, this isn't cool. You know, anyone that watches the documentary about the cobalt mines, mm. anyone that reads the articles, you know, about where they get lithium and cobalt from and all this stuff, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, the, there's, there's, the, there's the whole <clears throat> environmental aspect of it, the environmental aspect of, these batteries are not a sustainable solution to a sustainability problem. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then you've also got the fact that they're not even really that practical for 
municipalities. Yeah. How can you have how can you have a town where, you know, there might be a few thousand people living in there that's only just got rid of the payphone telephone box <laughs> at the end of the street and adopted internet and expect them to to fit charging stations, yeah. right? I mean, you imagine the, the classic one, Route 66. You yeah. imagine Route 66 in America, like where do you put them all? I mean, I'm sure there are, they are there. The Tesla supercharger network, for example, is is quite extensive in the US, but you know, that's home territory for it and it should be. But that takes a lot of maintenance and that yeah. takes a lot well, of... And that's the other side. You put them in, it's not one one shot deal. You don't put them in and walk away. The the connectors to the car, the yeah. coupling system, which is the problem I had here. Right? Yeah, and I would, I would say that hospitality, public service, and you know, general sort of in every sort of measurable scale in terms of how it is to exist in this country would be up there against any country. Mm. And even here, we've got problems with the connectors being damaged. I used. I've, I've had two an issue with two, and I only had a vehicle that I'd probably used at four different charging points. So that's not a good hit rate, is it? No. Well, here's here's another good one. I was looking at a report out of Consumer Report uh, out of the out of the U.S., and it was talking about EVs mm. from the consumer. You know, and Consumer Report is is really a an authority on everything that you're going to go buy. They test. They're impartial. Mm. And they're saying that the problem with EVs is reliability and build, build quality and reliability. And they're saying when it comes to EVs versus traditional internal combustion engines, there are far more repair issues with the EVs. Yeah, this was my point at the start. I think that everything starts albeit these had a good head start because they could poach people from the industry it's still new technology yeah. in terms of the usability of it. And a lot of it will be down to the driver not being educated on what to expect. From well, the here, but there's, there's another side to it. And this is the one that, that folks who are listening are looking at the cars in front of them. And what do you notice about all vehicles, no matter what style it is, internal combustion, hybrid, electric, you, you're looking at the physical body panels, how things fit, mm. door handles. Yeah. And another thing that Consumer Report noted was just the fit out of these vehicles, how the body panels are coming together, are sometimes rather suspect. It's just not good quality construction. And you noticed this when you had yeah, an yeah. EV up on the lift and you said bolts were in odd directions, the seams to things weren't clearly aligning, yeah. and you get some wear and tear. And that's going to be mayhem. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we do, myself and DJ, we, we always are the ones that work on the EVs when they come in. The last one we had in was a Model 3, which we fit a rear screen to. It wasn't a Tesla component. It was an aftermarket component, but it was effectively plug and play. And when you're taking the trims apart on the inside, it's just the same story. You know, they're, they're clearly not <laughs> going to last. And... You know, but I've said this before, I feel like electric vehicles are seen like mobile phones now. Right. They're seen as throwaway. Yeah. And as soon as, although it never really happened, but as soon as um, Elon Musk said that before they they released the Model 3, that it was going to be a thirty to $35,000 price point, although that's still a heck of a lot of money and I can't afford to buy one, that's golf money. Mm. And that, just added to it, I think, and people were looking at it as if to say, well, you know, I like for, you're not going to go to a classic car meet in 45 years and see a Tesla there. Yeah. The battery won't work for a start, but you're not going to see a Tesla, a classic car. It's not that kind of vehicle, and the people buying them new aren't that kind of person. They're mm. probably not even car people. Mm. They're justifying their use of a car by saying, well, it's not really a polluting car because obviously the electricity from the power plant doesn't come from a coal burning power plant or an oil or gas burning power plant it comes from the fairies that charge the batteries with pure angel tears but (laughs) you can't have you can't have for me i i I, from and again it's limited experience i'm not working for tesla or any other ev manufacturer but 
they don't look like they're going to enjoy being taken apart and put back together many times. Yeah. You know, I, I can't see them getting four or 500,000 kilometers on them and having the suspension dismantled six, seven times in that time and, and what, surviving that. What I wonder is, are the Volkswagen vehicles, are the Volvo vehicles, are the BMWs, the Mercedes and the GM vehicles go down the list, the traditional automakers yeah are they going to have a better shot at getting that component the body panels and all that how they connect are they going to have a better shot because this is something they've been doing for a hundred years versus the new startups they have to be they have to be better right they have to be better you'd hope i mean the id6 that we had for a while that's obviously a chinese built vw but it, it, it did seem better. Mm. It, it, it did seem better. But, you know, ultimately, with like, for example, we, we're talking about build quality here. We've had reliability. If you were to go into those figures, you might have people complain about reliability because, you know, they can't, like, for example, with the Tesla, the, the, there's the whole thing in the North American market where the door handles, the flush door handles that pop out right. freeze when it's <laughs> too cold, right? Sure. That's a reliability problem. Yeah, yeah. That's no good. I remember that happening in the UK with, uh, we were changing door seals on uh, Dalston Polos because they were, they were freezing and the seals were getting stuck. Mm. So the handles would work, but the seals wouldn't allow the door to be pulled open unless you gave it a real good tug. But that's a reliability issue. Yeah. But it's other, also something like if it needs a software update, which everything on there needs software. Oh, it's, it's a big problem. You know, and also, customers on these testers, again, in, in their defense, are being probably more aware of little faults which they might not get to know about on a traditional car until it goes into the dealer because everything's connected to, you know, Tesla can turn up with a maintenance team because <laughs> the cars have sent a message saying, yeah. Oh, you know, you've got a problem, you need to come out and change this or look at this or upgrade this or update this. So, you know, and again, like I said, it might be that it's not necessarily car people that are buying them. You know, that that that, that could also be a different. I, I'd be interested to see how many of them are wheel bearings or coolant pumps that are cooling the batteries and motors and how many are actually just little glitches where the screen stopped working or mm. the door handle's not working. Yeah. And although that a fault is a fault, I think, you know, we can... We can weight them differently. Yeah, I. It's amazing seeing some of the new cars that are coming out right now, and things, slowly but surely, I'm seeing new vehicles on the road, and some of them are are pretty exciting. And we're talking traditional things like Altimas and and others that I'm looking, going, wow. These first of all, the Altima's gotten big. I saw mm. a Yaris sedan. I didn't even know they still made those. I saw a Yaris sedan. That thing's huge. Yeah, and and it was what the old Yaris hatch original one was like. Yeah, yeah. and it was funny because I was looking at the Yaris sedan and I'm going, okay, it's a lot like one of the the GM Spark, about the same size. Yeah, and I'm looking at it and I'm looking at the Yaris and I'm going, you know what? They've done it right because it's a tiny car, but all of the pieces seem to be proportional. So the bumper is proportional to the tires that are thin are proportional, and it and aesthetically. It looked okay. It 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 didn't. I, sometimes you get these small cars where the bumpers are huge and the rear yeah. lights are oversized, and it it looks like some kind of that toy. Whereas this this new Yaris, I was like, wow, nice. Yeah, I'd have liked to have thought that. It'd be nice to think that you know traditional car manufacturers are doubling down on what they know they do best yeah. in sort of shall we say response to the big push from from the ev side of things and i hope so you know you'd like to think that that's the case i you don't know though you just don't you just don't know it, it's it's again a lot of models coming to the end of their run yeah you know manufacturers oh. are saying they're not going to make them anymore jeep renegade in in the u.s yeah, this yeah. is the lowest entry level jeep available yeah gone they're yeah. they're not making them anymore like it's and i look i i drove in one i you know it's when when you're used to driving the big bad boy, yeah, yeah, you go from a Wrangler to a Renegade. It's kind of like, yeah, okay, yeah. But it had a place, and there, you know, it's amazing. Like, well, like we said, the Golf going 
It's gone. Well, like we've said though, right? The yeah. smaller cars for people they're are going. what get a kid into the brand. And so they're going. You'll buy, you'll buy a Polo. They'll go to a Golf, yeah. and then when they're older, they'll get a Passat or a Touareg. They don't care anymore because the kids <laughs> nowadays aren't going to buy cars. <laughs> That's exactly. That it. seems to be what the attitude is. Here's a good one. We've talked about this forever. Suzuki. Mm. And I'm not talking DJ Suzuki motorcycle here. I'm talking the cars. Same size engines. So, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> They've got the new Jimny. Did you see that? Yeah. The last thing that needed was more doors, right? <laughs> it's, now a, it's now a four-door extended version. What the Jimny had going for it was its, its diminutive sta- size. Yeah. Made it a little bit quirky, a little bit cool. Tiny. Let's, let's give it two more doors and make it. Now they've got a full back seat. And, and I haven't seen one in the wild yet, <laughs> but, and, and I got to say for about seven seconds, I was looking at that and I showed it to the wife and I said, look at this, it's a Jimny. And she goes, can we get one of those in Canada? And then, and then it was, you know, that was five seconds and we kept counting then it's two and then it was like, hold on a second. Imtishan let us drive his around for a little bit and we made it two blocks before we drove it back to him. Just kind of went. Why would anyone own? Them? I mean, look, it it has its it has its place. Yeah, and I, I nothing against Suzuki. Sat on the drive to look at. Well, it, it, look, if you're driving around your community, it's if you're driving in the city, I wouldn't necessarily say the school run, but if you're just doing yeah. the grocery run and in and out, it's it's fun, it's easy. Small engine, easy to park, and yeah. if you need to, you can get on the sand. Yeah. yeah, but do I want to be driving that thing to Abu Dhabi? No, probably not. No. Screaming it down the motorway. No. and now we've got now we've got four doors, so I got a bigger. It's it's kind of like a a Sierra Jeep Wrangler. So when, yeah. and I I remember when those went four door, I was I was the first guy going who would buy a four door version of that? Who would have known I would have bought one? Yeah, but the Wrangler's got a, a V six in it, James. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. It's true. So Jimny's what is it? One point three or one point five or something? Like that? Maybe they, I so I haven't seen one in a while, but I really do want to see one, and. Get a good walk around. I guess I could always go to the dealer, but they almost always sell those things out so fast. I mean, they they can't keep them in stock. I don't know who's buying them, nor who's driving them, but they're gone. Yeah, yeah, they they very they popular. Are. Yeah, I mean, they do sell as soon yeah. as they get stocked. They're gone. Yeah, you know, and they're they're still four or five years old in the seventy five eighty thousand dirhams. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's 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 a nice price point, does the job, and they're quirky. So you you get in it, you get a smile on your face because you're driving the quirky mobile. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I understand the appeal of them. I tried to get my sister who's a uh, a carer, um, so she's like she goes to people's houses. I tried to get her to buy a little Jimny, yeah. not this iteration of them, the one before. Yeah, yeah. She stupidly bought a Corsa, Vauxhall Corsa, oh. which was a mistake. But, you know, the reason I told her to buy that was because she's 24-7 on call sometimes. Yeah. And it does snow and put the four-wheel it's on. four-wheel drive and you're good to go. It's still, and one thing that most people would probably agree on with Suzuki's, although I can't say for this one, we don't see that many of them, that they're known to be reliable. Right? I, I, for sure. I mean, that's the one thing I look at the Qashqai and, and other things. Oh, I hope that's Suzuki. Yeah, no, Nissan Qashqai. Oh no, sorry, Nissan Qashqai. What's the what's the one that Suzuki has? Is it the Samurai or something? No, yeah, no. something like that. Yeah, there's, sorry, yeah. sorry for mixing up with Nissan. Well, sell more cars, and then we don't know about it. Yeah. Suzuki, it's your own fault. Well, and this is this is the other problem. <laughs> and I and I and you know, again, nothing against Suzuki, but they they really do rely on word of mouth and some socials. So I, I just don't see as much of the promotion. I'd love to see more. Yeah. I mean, like the Jimny was a massive hit and it was always going to be. Yeah. It was always going to be because they always have been. Like, I think they used to call them the little SJ, weren't they, before they got the name Jimny. Yeah. And yeah. They were always going to sell loads of them. That's just how it was going to be. But yeah. I'm not sure they needed two more doors. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. This mm. might be This might be the breakout for it. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. It's 1.5 <laughs> litres. I've just checked. It's not. I mean, I'm not saying that you can't. You can't it's, but it's, but I'm not, I can't even see now. It's for some reason not loading, but I'm sure it's over 100 horsepower. So, you know, it's I enough know. to shift I'm, it. But it's. I'm just thinking the back seat bench as they described it and showed a picture. Now, I was looking on social, so I, you know, I didn't get a good view. But the way they described it and the look of it, I just went, I don't know if that's going to be comfy. 
I was not. Uh, oh no, I mean looking at a Suzuki Jimny in general. You know, you know exactly what it's going to sound like when you tap the dashboard, and you know exactly what it's going to feel like in yeah, the seat. Yeah. And you know exactly how many times you're going to go to the chiropractor after doing any kind of drives in it. <laughs> that's, most, that's most cars these days, unless yeah, you're yeah. buying something that's a couple hundred thousand. It's uh, they're 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 deadly, deadly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the <clears throat> the Lincoln, the Lincoln Continental and Navigator. I think their seats were designed with input from orthopedic surgeons, I believe. And I, I, I over and over, got a good friend back in Canada who bought a Mercedes, and, and my first response was, "Why wouldn't you have bought a Lincoln?" Just get if it. I lived in the North American market, I don't think I'd ever buy. And you've got Cadillacs and Lincoln. That's what I, I mean. I just like, first of all, they're 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 made yeah. for the environment. Second of all, they're big. Third, you can get it fixed. Fourth, they are chock full of of great features. Yeah, the Cadillacs and Lincolns are up there. Yeah, even so, even the you say Cadillac, even GMC. Yeah, they got some good stuff yeah. these days. It's, yeah. it's pretty pretty wild. I have a great great one. We were we were at the Double Tree in JBR, and it's got a strange parking lot because you kind of go up into it. And there was someone with a, a new Tahoe. They couldn't do the turn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming up behind them, and I noticed, oh, they're, they're precariously stopped. Oh, they're backing up. It's like, what's going on? What's, what, are they abandoning? I go, no, I don't think they can do the turn. <laughs> it's, it doesn't help. <laughs> they, they've just got out. Yeah. Left it to the like, rally. Yeah, yeah. Cheers to drive. Good luck. So, hey, just so we can give them their due. So the model range for 2023 for Suzuki. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. There's the Ignis. Oh, yes. That's which isn't, tiny. Which that's isn't, tiny. Which isn't an overly offensive small car, to be fair. The Swift. Okay. Oh, uh, there we go. That's the most popular yeah, one. That's yeah. like the the little yeah. Yaris kind of thing. The Swift Sport. Yeah. Which, to be fair, looks a lot better than the Swift. Uh-huh. Vitara. <laughs> Bigger. Yes. And then there's the new S-Cross. Oh. Which, is in that? the UK, this, so, okay, so then there's the Swace. It's spelled S W A C E. This is a UK site, so mm -hmm. I've never seen any of these cars here, but I've not seen any Suzukis unless it's a Jimny or the odd Ignis that's like 15 years old. And then the Across. Oh. Now the Across is £50,000 <laughs> base model. Oh, that's so a, that's, that's 160,000 dirhams base model. Okay. For a Suzuki. Hmm. Oh, that seems a little high end. That's that not is usually high end, the market yeah. Suzuki's yeah. Uh, position for it. So no, and the last—I mean, it's big. It looks big. Yeah, but I, I don't think, think they sell that one here. I think the last time they changed the model of the Touareg, I think the entry level was like one hundred eighty thousand yeah. dirhams. Okay, mm, but yeah. yeah, there's no chimney down on there, so I think they don't—they don't—they obviously aren't doing them in the in the UK. So they've obviously run out of stock. Or oh, they're all coming to the UAE. I have to say, the Swayze is an awful looking car. <laughs> Shocking yeah, I'm, car. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm dialing up here, and of course, that's. Oh man, there's you that. are dialing up. It's slow today for some reason. I'm, the first thing you see when you come to the site, the <laughs> UAE, is the Jimny, but it's, it's, and the four door, but it's, uh, it's not an, it's a, it's a man, it's automatic transmission. Yeah, that's not good either, is it? That's definitely not. That's that's not a way to go. Just looking at the new cars. Oh, the Bolano. This oh yeah, the Bolano. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Bolano, then the Swift, then the Jimny, then the, the Desire. That's the one. The, the Z. That's the one I think I was thinking of when you said the Z. There's Desire. The, there's the Ertiga, which is yeah. the the minivan. Yeah. Then you've got this bigger thing, which kind of the Sias, which looks like a Toyota. It's in the Toyota Corolla range. Uh, then you got a panel van, the Eco, E E C O cargo van. Nice. Then the Grand, the Grand Viat, Vitara, Vitara, yeah. Grand Vitara, that looks sweet. And uh, then the Fronx. <laughs> I haven't seen one of those. F R O N X. That, What's that? that? I don't know. Jenny from the block. It says right here, vibe different. Oh yeah, spelt different as well. I'm just looking it up here. It's uh, you know what you know what. At first glance, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, this looks like a Subaru. Well, probably some 
cross pollination, isn't there? No, there's a 15 C dual jet engine with eight SHVS mild hybrid. I have no idea what that means. It means it'll slide down a lot. <laughs> 1. Yeah. 1.5 liter, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. I, mild hybrid as well. A K 15 C dual jet engine with CHVS mild hybrid. What else, a, what else do you need to know? <laughs> what else do you need to know? Who's writing this copy? Is what, what else do you need know. to know? <laughs> to be fair, though, to be fair, Suzuki fit into the uh, combustion temperature is low. Oh, very good. Put your hand on the exhaust then. Put your hand on the exhaust. And, and you've got exa exhaust gas uh, recirculation. They're not advertising that, surely. Yeah, yeah. the ECR system. Right, uh, there we go. Great. There we go. Yeah. Well, I mean, has it got tires? And the advertising, it's got tires. Yeah, yeah. That too. A little bit of heads-up display, but uh, it's a weird one. Uh, <laughs> okay. It's nice. It's, a, it's nice. Okay, I got it. I got to go. The heads-up display is just the three mirrors, <laughs> pretty much. One you have to wear on your forehead. <laughs> one you stick on the windscreen, and then there's one on the ceiling. I mean, like nothing, nothing against Suzuki at all. We're 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 Suzuki fans, but they, it's just. I I know one thing about Suzuki is they are not pushing any electric vehicles, and I think that's no, why no. that's why they're consciously making that choice. As people go electric, they're not. So they're yeah, I mean, you wonder what happens. We have had the same thing with Mazda, right? Mazda said no chance we're doing EVs. Yeah, yeah. In fact, let's get the rotary back out, make a yeah. double rotary engine RX. We're gonna again. we're gonna ride the wave until it's done, yeah, and yeah. then we'll... I don't think I think I think it might be still cresting that way yeah. because to be honest, like I said, people are. And and you've only got you know you've got social media to blame or thank whichever way you look at it for it, but it's never been easy to get access to information as it is now. Now the, the obviously the downside to that is echo chambers and yeah yeah and, you know, and some might say we're an echo chamber potentially yeah, <laughs> but I do like to think that I listen to a lot of yeah. different sides of a story, you know, and yeah. and different opinions on things and. That's the beauty now that everyone does have an opinion on something. Yeah. It's something that you might have always thought was cut and dry. There's always mm -hmm. somebody else with an offer and a different opinion. And it's not necessarily about listening to those opinions because you want to have your mind changed. It's about listening to the opinions so that you can be sure that you're making a a reasonable Absolutely. conclusion in your mind. Well, here's, here's a whole other side. We're gonna. I want to put this on the table for our next podcast. And it's. I want to go back to right to repair. But hold on. Mm. It's really. And I was reading something. And it came down to that the right to repair might not actually be the real issue. It's the right to your data yeah. from your vehicle That's that the becomes the real issue. And they say, and I just kind of went, oh, that is so true because most of us don't realize that we do not have access to the data that's being collected no. from our vehicle. And what you also need to realize now, full George Orwell, 1984, is anyone with a vehicle that has an app on their mobile phone, mm. which is most vehicles now, you can set the yeah. engine, go in, set the AC or the heater, whichever way you want it in the morning before you leave for work. Most new vehicles come with an app. Most new vehicles are connected to the internet. They're all on the IoT, right? Yeah. Every time you speed, that's logged. Yeah. And I'm not saying it goes to the police. Well, my, my son's got I'm one of those for his insurance company. Is, well, that's, yeah, so that's a, that's a, a, a third party yeah. uh, vehicle and so his tracker. Third, yeah. His third party tracker with his app. A lot of younger people have to have them for insurance, otherwise yeah. they can't get insurance. He gets an yeah. insurance break. Yeah. And they also know how far he's driving. They're yeah. tracking yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now everything's logged on the, yeah. on the onboard computer right. to the point where it's not just theory, this can be done. Somebody only has to, you know, you only have to, in effect, have it that the police can plug into, not yeah. even physically, <laughs> your data and send you a fine through the post that you were speeding yeah. yesterday. Yeah, it's going to happen. It is going to happen, unfortunately. And, I'm, I'm, and I would say, whether it's good or bad, we'll not put an opinion out there now, but that will happen in China and social credit scores will be affected by yeah, it if absolutely. it isn't already. We're going to pick that up. Uh, Glenn, unfortunately, we have to cut our podcast short. We will pick it up again really, really soon. Uh, thank you everyone for tuning in, dialing in, no matter how you're listening to us, whichever platform that is, thank you. And please do share this podcast, do like us, do give us comments. Those of you who are listening in your cars on 100.3, thank you for taking the time. We'll talk to you again really, really soon. WhatsApp in your comments, they'll get them to us and we'll get them on this program. Glenn Power, 
PowerWorks Garage. As always, thank you very much. Thank you. Talk to you again real soon.